tell you about how a very short stint in the entertainment industry sent me running back to sixth form. On the day everybody got their exam results from the first year of sixth form, with mine was a letter to say that I was not to attend back the second year. I did all right in my exams, but they were really unhappy with my attendance and to be honest, it was pretty poor. Anyway, I wasn't unhappy about it. I really wanted to start earning my own money. And at that point, I'd already been working for about three years. I was working in a restaurant and I also used to do like promotional work, you know, like the leafleting samples and all of that jazz. So I started to give my CV out in different industries that I thought I wanted to work in, like the photography, set design, hair, makeup, things like that for magazines. And a friend of my mum's, who was an actress and a model at the time, recommended a website called A Small World. Now on this website, you can connect with other people from the same industry. Bear in mind, I had no experience with anything like this, but I just thought I'll stick a profile on there and see how it goes. Now, to my surprise, within about three days, I had quite a lot of messages on there. One of the messages I got really stood out. It was like nothing I'd ever received before, so I was kind of intrigued. It was from a very beautiful girl called Sophie. I did a little bit of stalking on her profile. She seems quite cool. I checked her other social media. I was like, wow, this girl is legit. Now, Sophie's what they call a booker. And a booker is somebody who gets sent jobs by potential clients and then you send profiles over the girls that you have in your books. Now Sophie goes on to tell me that she's got loads of potential jobs that she thinks I would be a great candidate for. And I'm like, well Sophie, I'm five foot one. I am not a model. I don't want to waste her time, I don't want to waste my time. So Sophie replies and much to my surprise, she tells me that they do actually have a job going in their office. Now alarm bells should be ringing because my profile doesn't say anything about experience in, in any kind of booking situation hey but that doesn't seem to worry her so we set a date for me to go to their office which is based in chelsea i arrive on the day and it's blatantly obvious that i am not dressed appropriately now don't get me wrong i'm not wearing trainers or flip-flops or anything like that i've worn my sixth form clothes i've come like i would for a job interview these girls are giving devil wears prada so the interview doesn't go great if i'm totally honest with you but again to my surprise it doesn't seem to matter to any of them because I'm told my face fits. I'm not joking, that's exactly what they said, your face fits. So the owner of the modelling agency asked me if I can start straight away. And she means straight away. She hands me loads of cards and she tells me to go to Oxford Street and find some fit girls. So I do exactly that. And I love it. It's easy. I love speaking to women. A few months go by and I've worked with some really cool people. I worked with Borat and loads of very famous models. I get to go to some amazing parties. And overall, it's just like a dream job. I can't believe my luck. But then the cracks start to appear. We get told we've got very important casting to arrange. He's a billionaire businessman. And he's looking for an attractive assistant who can speak Russian and French. Now, this is very specific criteria. So me and the girls in the office are scrambling. We've literally got this brief in like 24 hours before. So we stay at that office all night long. We go through every profile we've got on our books and when we can't find that many candidates, we actually end up going on Facebook. We end up with what we think is a fairly good selection. We put it all into a slideshow. I can't even believe we used to do this, gross. And the slideshow used to have the girls' measurements. Why does it matter you're gonna be an assistant? Their heights and also a selection of photos of them. Next day, we head to the client. He's got an amazing apartment in Mayfair. I've never seen anything like this in my life. One of the attractive things about this job is that the person will get to travel a lot on a private jet. And the salary, I won't go into specifics. Let's just say it was a lot of money. Too much money for the position. So to be honest with you, me and the girl that were booking the job, we were kind of jealous of these girls. We were thinking, wow, your life is about to be changed. So when we go with our little laptop with the pictures of all the girls on there, immediately it's weird vibes. This guy is sitting on a little armchair, he's really old. And next to him is this absolutely stunning Russian girl. Now the Russian girl is doing all the talking for him and she's flicking through the pictures of the girls. She's flicking too fast, she's not happy. The guy begins to mumble something to the girl sitting next to him. Now we can already tell by the body language that this isn't good news and our boss isn't gonna be happy at all. He's not interested in any of the girls we've got. So they then ask us to go and wait outside so that they can have a chat. During this chat, they ring our boss. Within five minutes, we've got her on the phone screaming. I could do another video entirely on this woman. She was a bitch. The phone call ends with Sophie in tears. See, what I didn't realise is that Sophie hadn't been paid in a few months. And her wages were solely riding on the commission that she would make on this job. It was being held above her head. 
So Sophie's actually French and she's moved here with pretty much just the clothes on her back. And so far, the boss has been pretty good to her. She's kind of fed her this dream. But as I say, the last few months, she's not been paid and Sophie's rent is expensive. She's living in Chelsea. Everything's starting to make sense. The math ain't mathin. We head back to the office and as you can imagine with a woman like this, the abuse is just being hurled across the room. She's throwing things. She actually tells us she's going to Zara to buy a short skirt and she's going to go and smooth things over with him. What the fuck? So she does exactly that. And when she comes back, she's got the new terms and conditions for this deal. The guy wants Sophie. He is willing to take her on as kind of like his orphan. And now the terms of this job are completely different to the ones that we've been sent with the nice big paycheck. Sophie will essentially be like a slave. That's how I saw it anyway. Yes, she will get to fly around the world on a private jet, but she'll have to go with this old pervert and she won't really get a salary. The salary will be the luxury of traveling with him. And of course, this would save her from the dilemma of having to move back home. And it will in fact solve our boss's financial woes because she will still get her fixer's fee. And Sophie has to agree to it. So she does. And then they end up brokering some kind of weird deal where Sophie will still be working for the modelling agency, but she will also be travelling with this guy, which kind of then resolves all the issues. However, before Sophie actually gets to pack her bag and leave, we start to receive some very strange phone calls at the office. And these phone calls are from a woman with an accent. She warns us that one of our very high profile clients is actually a... So me and the other girls warn Sophie because we think we know exactly who this is. And Sophie ends up legging it back to Paris. Thank God. Now, weeks and weeks later, we would start to get some very concerning emails from some of our models. Some of the jobs that they were being sent on were inappropriate, to say the least, which was absolutely heartbreaking for us because we had been the ones sending them on the jobs. We'd trusted this woman. We end up never getting paid for our time there. The company goes under, I think in around 2016, from what I can find online. She changes her name a few times and she ends up somewhere in New York doing the same kind of thing. I decide that the industry is definitely not for me. I've seen enough. And this video doesn't even cover half of what I saw. Come September, I ran back to a college that was local to me, enrolled and finished my A-levels. But I always think of the girls that I worked with. And sometimes on here, I'll see some of the models that I booked for jobs that are like content creators and things like that now. And I always were tempted to reach out to them and be like, did you have this experience on this job? But I just don't think it would be my place. But I would love to find Sophie and see how she is now. So if anybody knows of a Sophie who was from France, who works at a modeling agency in Barron's Court in Chelsea between the years of 2011 and 2012, please let me know. Because I would love to get back in contact with her. That's my story about how I basically worked for the Dutch version of Julian Maxwell without even realising it. And the moral of this story is, if things seem too good to be true, they most likely are.